you, you recognize what's on the tape, and he's got new wrinkles, of course, and uh, they do a great job. He's a great coach. I've known Don, and we've been friends since we were we were kids, basically, almost, you know, kids and coaching, and, um, you know, proud of him as a, what he did here, obviously, and uh, he's doing a great job up there. I mean, they're playing great defense, so nothing but respect and love. Knowing hey. Wink, like you just said, how, I guess, differently do you expect him to approach this Sunday against you guys and you? It's a great question. We were just having that conversation out there. It's like, he knows that we know that we know that he knows that he knows that we know, right? So it's something like that. John, how difficult was the meeting with Wink when you had to tell him it was over? You know, it, was, it wasn't like that. It was, uh, we had great conversations throughout. We were talking all the time. We're, we're close, you know, so it wasn't like a specific meeting. It was just kind of a, an opportunity to talk about where we were both going and, you know, what was best. And, and that's the, I think we both came to that decision together, I would say. That's how I'd like to look at it. You know, I feel that way about it. And I think it's turning out great for him and, you know, just nothing but uh, admiration for what he's doing. Turning out great for him. Our defense stinks, however. That's the part John Harbaugh <laughs> didn't say, right? <laughs> but that adds some spice. You look at Ravens, Giants, and you think, man, eh, yeah, the Giants are pretty good, but there's nothing that really jumps off the page until you scratch the surface and realize. Wink Martindale, the defensive coordinator for several years in Baltimore, knows that offense very well. You get Greg Roman versus Martindale. Roman, the offensive coordinator. Martindale, the defensive coordinator. They know each other's wrinkles, and they're going to be using that. They're going to be guessing what they think the other guy is going to do when the Ravens' offense is on the field. I think that makes uh, that game one of the most compelling of the day. Beyond the two that we've talked about, to me, that's the one that stands out the most. You know, a couple of things, Mike. Number one, uh, when John Harbaugh decided to replace Wink Martindale with Mike McDonald, however the mechanics of that worked out, uh, but when he decided to replace Wink Martindale, I think one of the things that at least someone uh, who knows the Ravens very well told me is that they thought that McDonald was more of a guy who would use practice to help his team learn the defense Wink Martindale used practice to try to beat the offense uh, and, you know, not necessarily to get his guys ready to play that opponent that week. That might be fair, might be unfair, but you can tell they do miss Wink Martindale. The most glaring statistical evidence of that is that last year, Wink Martindale's defense allowed 3.8 yards per rush. This year, the Ravens are allowing 5.0 yards per rush. And even though Saquon Barkley is, is banged up entering this game, you've got to figure that if the Giants win this game, it's going to be a Saquon Barkley production against a poor run defense. And that point you made is so fascinating because I kind of like the idea of having a defense that is so determined to win every time it steps onto the field, game or practice, that that manifests itself in the game. Yeah, maybe you not may not be as buttoned up and ready to face that offense, but you've got a fire that never goes out if you're focused on beating your own offense more than you're focused about preparing for the next opponent. We're ready for anyone. We'll go out here anytime, anyplace, anywhere and kick your ass if we can. I kind of like that attitude in a defense. I mean, I guess so. I think, you know, the macho thing, you know, worked for a while. At least, look, and I'm, this is me basically looking at this situation from afar. We're not inside the team. We don't know deep down why John Harbaugh made this decision. But my belief in the word you hear about Mike McDonald, you know, the defensive coordinator now, is teacher. And so... I mean, we'll see. Long term, the results are the results, Mike. We'll see which works better for now. It really does look like they miss Martindale. Well, and sometimes it's as basic as two alphas can only coexist for so long in the same building. And yeah, maybe that had yeah. something to do with it as well. Vikings at the Dolphins. Four and one Minnesota somehow. Dolphins started three and oh, they've lost two in a row. 
They'll be starting Skylar Thompson at quarterback because Tua Tonga Vilo is still recovering from his concussion from 15 days ago that he suffered on Thursday night football against the Bengals. Teddy Bridgewater, though he's back at practice, he's likely not going to be cleared by Sunday. Can the Vikings take advantage of this? When you consider, and it's been three straight games now, Peter, no road game for the Vikings, no true road game. They had to go to London, but they weren't playing in a hostile environment in another team's building like yeah. if they would have been in the Superdome against the Saints. This is the first time since the Eagles game where they're in hostile territory. They barely beat the Lions, barely beat the Saints, barely beat the Bears. I'm not sold on the Vikings yet, and I don't care that it's Skylar Thompson at quarterback. Mike McDaniel, the head coach of the Dolphins, can put together a running attack that can take advantage of a bad Vikings defense. I don't know if the Vikings offense has enough sustained consistency to win. I feel like they're getting down to these coin flips at the end of every game, and they've had it come up their way three straight games. I just feel like their luck's going to run out. I don't care who the quarterback is. They can bring back Bob Greasy, and I don't care. I think the Vikings are going to have a hard time extending this streak to four in a row. You know, Mike, I think that good coaches, Frank, Frank Reich told me this um, a couple of years ago. He, he said that I can get a guy and a good offensive coach can get a quarterback ready, almost any quarterback, get ready to play well and to win one game. Now, what he was referring to is that, you know, at the time uh, that I spoke to him, they weren't sure, and this is, in fact, it wasn't a couple of years ago, it was last year, where they might have had to play uh, Sam Ellinger uh, in one of their games, you know, the young kid from Texas. Um, and, you know, he thought that, you know, I can get him ready to win a game. Now, long-term, they're going to see your warts, but short-term, you ought to be able to get a guy ready to win a game. And I think Mike McDaniel has to have the confidence in himself in his own coaching ability and in his staff to figure a way against an okay but not great defense to be able to find a way for Skylar Thompson to make enough plays to win that game. And I bet a thousand bucks that in their meetings this week that that is what they were totally focused on. They didn't have any time prep time before they played the Jets to say, Hey, what does Skylar Thompson do well? Let's put that in the game plan. They they didn't think Skylar Thompson was going to play last week. So this week, knowing that you've got to get him ready and knowing that all week in practice, you have been focusing with Thompson on the plays he can make. Uh, I, I, think, I think Miami's got a heck of a shot at this game. And Thompson created a ton of buzz during the preseason. And yes, it wasn't against the starters, but he really stood out and he got people thinking, hey, if this doesn't work out with Tua, maybe the Dolphins don't have to get desperate and go after some other veteran. Maybe they're developing a guy internally who could take over. So we'll see what Skylar Thompson does against the Vikings on Sunday. Lambeau Field. The Packers go back after losing in London, and in come the Jets. I said this yesterday, Peter. If I'd have told you five weeks ago that the Jets and the Packers would have identical records after five games, you wouldn't believe me because there's no way the Packers aren't going to be that good. There's no way the Jets are going to be that good. But here they are at the intersection of good and bad at three and two each. And the Jets are dangerous because, as Aaron Rodgers said after the loss to the Giants, they are in too many close games. The margins are too thin and they can lose every game. They're used to being dominant. The dominance isn't there and it opens the door for the Jets to steal yet another one on the road. They won at Cleveland down 13 with two minutes left. They won in Pittsburgh down 10 minutes in the fourth quarter. Tell you what, if the Packers have a lead late, they better be on guard because the Jets know how to come take it from you. You know, the couple of things that you like about the Jets right now is I loved hearing the attitude in the last couple of weeks out of Zach Wilson. You know, he is, it's almost like it's no more Mr. Nice Guy with Zach Wilson. You know, he's thought of this, you know, fresh face kid who looks like he's 16 years old and, and always smiling and, and all this. And now he says, okay, look, I know what everybody's saying about me. I know what everybody's saying about us. Well, you know, blank you, we are going to go out and play well. And even though his kind of semi-idol throughout high school and college was Aaron Rodgers, 
I don't think he's going to be intimidated going to Lambeau Field because we've seen a different kind of attitude with Zach Wilson. Plus, the other thing is, Mike, now you look at the New York Jets, and 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 I'm not saying that either one of these or none of these three guys are 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 going to be Pro Bowl guys or anything like that this year. But when you look at the triumvirate of Corey Davis, Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson, you have a representative to very good receiving core right now. And so this isn't only going to be, you know, can Aaron Rodgers, uh, you know, finally start to get on the same page with some of his receivers, you know, his young receivers. I think this is, can Green Bay bother Zach Wilson enough in the pocket and play these really good receivers well enough so that Zach Wilson doesn't hit a couple of bombs against him? Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.